Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Parkside Cabin Rentals. Uh, cabin for two, cabin for ten, cabin for a whole corporate retreat. They've got them all. Cabin by the stream, cabin near a mountaintop, cabin close to downtown Gatlinburg. They've got them all. Whatever type of spot you want, they've got it. ParksideCabinRentals.com to learn more and free parking in downtown Gatlinburg whenever you stay at one of their spectacular cabins. All right, let's welcome in the final member of today's panel, David Evan from The Athletic. David, thanks for being with Thank us. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, uh, the Knoxville News Sentinel reported this week that in addition to big extensions, we can go ahead and put up the, uh, the numbers here, in addition to the big extension and raise that went to Josh Heupel a month ago, several of his assistants got raises or extensions this year. You see all the numbers there. I split it out by year. So Josh Heupel's in through 2029, Ellerby, Halsley, and uh, Ablin through 2026. Banks, Garner, Jean-Marie, Eckler, Mack, and Pope through 2025. Only Willie Martinez. Now, he's got a good salary there. So it's 540. It's been one of the better salaries. It's a couple of guys lower than him. But his deal ends January 2024. Secondary wasn't great last year. David Ubbin, is that a – should we be reading into that? That Willie Martinez, if there's a hot seat on the assistant coaching staff, he's in it. Should be reading into that. Uh, be better next year. I think, I think, you know, I don't think the message. Yeah. I don't think it's like a harbinger of doom, but it's sort of like a, Hey, you know, this is a results based sport and a results based program. And I think if you look at the Josh Heupel era for all of its successes, if you're looking at the weak spot, I mean, you start with the defensive backs, obviously. Um, but you know, they inherited some talent there, obviously with losing, you know, Alante was hurt late in 2022, but you know, you don't have, you look at the pipeline, you're kind of looking around going, ah, yeah, last year he was recruiting and yeah, recruiting and development. Last year they they were and low they, on they that. had injuries on top. of We went into yeah. the season knowing mm -hmm. they didn't have talent there. Yeah, and then you had tons of injuries. A little cruel to beat him up for last year, in my opinion. But, well, I wouldn't beat him up, but say, hey, but at the end of the day, phase. you got to be better. Um, and we'll see, and you got to show some to show something because you know there's a lot of DB coaches out there, and and you know as, as loyal as as a coach is, I think you know. It's, it's again, it's, it's a results-based sport. Does everybody agree, or does anyone want to tell David he's wrong? <laughs> no, I think it it, it does it, it does point to you have to deliver better. I don't think it's a you're fired. And the only other thing that you could conclude from it is the possibility that maybe Willie Martinez is thinking about moving on yeah. and and ending coaching. And maybe this is sort of a a little bit of a of a soft transition for him. I don't know that he still is very young in the way he carries himself and always loved the sport. So I, I, I would doubt that, but I just want to flip that out as another possibility. But um, it, it's they have 20 scholarship DBs right now. So he's got to find a way. Nine seniors among that group of scholarship DBs got to find a way of what they've got to, to make it work. And I think that contract kind of tells you now's the time. And I think people want to beat up Tim Banks a lot. But it's like right. the defense does what the defense is designed to do. You're going to give up big plays. But you produce havoc. You produce negative plays. You produce turnovers. They do that. Yeah, we, um, we showed the numbers at the end of last season that, if anything, he was highly underrated. Yes. He did a, I mean, yeah. they, they finished top half of the conference and top quarter of the conference in a lot of statistics defensively. Considering you're tied to that offense and considering the roster inherited, uh, yeah, Banks has done a pretty good job. The scheme does what it's designed to do. And I wondered if what uh, Vince said might be correct. Could Martinez, in that scheme, realize I'm always the guy that's on the bubble here because of the scheme, because of the offense that occasionally hangs the defense out the dry just a little bit, Maybe he sat there and said, I may, I may want to be able to have the decision to move on on my own because I don't think if you look at the injuries that they had last year, you went in without a lot of depth, then you had injuries on top of that, you were playing a walk-on at the end of the Alabama game. How much of that can you hang on your defensive backs, Coach? So I just, I, I'm, I'm a little bit stronger than Vince was. I think there could be a decent little chance that Martinez says, you know, this may not be the best thing for me and my career because he is still a pretty young coach. Pressure on the quarterback is something that's out of his control yeah. that impacts his guys. Certainly and helps if you've got it. The thing is, though, he knew what he was getting into because he worked with Hypo yep. at UCF. That's true. So. Well, at the end of the day, he's been around the block. Yeah. He's been around a long time. Right. He knows a lot of people. If he does want to find somebody else, he's not going to have a hard time. Yeah. yeah, and I think that kind of works against him here because he's been here before. Yeah. And everybody knows who he was here with. So uh, anybody that has that stain on them, people around here are like, oh, he can't be a good coach. All right, when we come back, I want to talk to you, Mr. College Football Coverer for the <laughs> Athletic. Uh, we talked last week a little bit about 
league expansion and realignment and that kind of stuff. Well, we were five days too early because the Florida State Board of Trustees had their meeting this week, and for the first time, uh, one of the ACC schools said publicly, we need more money or something's going to have to change. What does that mean for the ACC, which in turn would open up the doors for the SEC to go and raid some of those schools? Is that where we are? We'll ask David next. we got a lot more to cover on the Sports Source. Come on back.